Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, this is Wes Wyatt, and what I want to do is talk to you today about an awesome uh, artist that did some work with Mighty Line Tape uh, in a way that is completely out of the box. And uh, what I want to do uh, first and foremost is just introduce you to the artist himself here on the screen, and that is Christopher Dean. Hey, hello. Good to meet you. Good to meet you as well, Christopher. And uh, what I want to do is just ask you right off. And, and uh, it was something I put up on the screen a couple of minutes ago, and you've actually answered these things in email uh, already. But uh, who's Christopher Dean? Uh, I'm a British artist. Um, I was born an hour north of London in Milton Keynes, England. And I now live in Dallas, Texas. I've been in the U.S. for approximately 10 years. Uh, I have an undergraduate degree in contemporary applied arts and a master's degree in sculpture. And so, uh, Christopher, uh, what was it that drew you to the, uh, I guess, diagonals and the, especially uh, working with the uh, safety tape, and I guess more uh, specifically, what was it about our uh, diagonal tape and, and, and safety tape that, that kind of, you know, drew it to, you know, wanting to use it for your art? Okay, there's uh, several answers to this. I guess the, the key thing is that I'm interested in the potential of ready-made materials, um, and, and I utilize art as a device to expand the experience we have with uh, familiar, ready-made, everyday objects and materials that perhaps wouldn't be considered as uh, useful beyond their initial function. Uh, the My attraction to diagonals um, is I, I'm intrigued by repetition. I'm intrigued by pattern and color. Um, and for me personally, I think that signs of safety remind us we exist. They are placed in warehouses, on roads, and, and multiple other locations and ultimately their intention is to alert you of a particular hazard or a particular environment in which you are potentially at risk. Um, so I, I like the idea of there's an immediacy to them and they're visually impactful. Uh, my attraction to the Mighty Line safety tape, I was researching online for ready-made materials uh, and specifically ready-made materials with really vivid and bold colors. And what came up was the Mighty Line safety tape. Um, so I, I ordered a small amount. I ran some tests with it and realized that it's a fascinating material, extremely adhesive. Um, and from there, I was running studio experiments with the material. I was using it as whole pieces. I was cutting it up into small pieces. Uh, and at that point, I had an opportunity for a large scale project. And I decided that the, the, the Mighty Line safety tape would be ideal for this, for all the reasons I've just mentioned. Uh, its formal qualities are really interesting, I think. Um, so I reached out to Mighty Line to discuss what I was doing and they were extremely excited about the potential of the project that I was working on for, uh, it was for Georgia Tech uh, Police Campus Safety Building. Now, we're going to actually bring that up and show uh, the viewers the uh, project that you did with that. And it's absolutely amazing, as well as the uh, art that uh, um, got commissioned for our um, warehouse, uh, or I should say our uh, our home office. Uh -huh. um, and it, it's kind of a, of a neat place because it's a church. So, um, you know, it, it's already a very unique office space, but, you yeah. know, the, the addition of your art was, you know, just really, really cool. Um, before we do that, uh, Christopher, let me ask a question that uh, may or may not have even come into the the uh, um, the mix, you know, with your art. But one of the things that people love about our tape is the fact that it's beveled on yeah. the edges. Um, yep. Did that affect your art in any way? Did you have to take off the bevel, or did or did it just kind of uh, conform into what you already did? Uh, so, sorry about that. Uh, the thing with the bevel is, well, I guess one of the things key is with ready-made materials, and specifically this tape, is that I I'm, enjoy the formal qualities of the materials, and I allow those to 
breathe for want for want of a better word. So I don't necessarily like to manipulate them too much. And the, the bevel is actually one of the things I enjoy most about the tape because when I place the tape side by side, um, there's like a, a beautiful flow of the each individual tape into the next section because of the bevel. So it creates really great formal qualities for my artwork. Okay, so I, yeah. I, I tend, I keep the bevel and I, I, at this point, I have not had to remove that and I embrace that. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I was just kind of wondering because, you know, if you're in a, an industrial type situation, you uh -huh. want the bevel because of the fact that it, it uh, allows for, you know, things like, uh, you know, tow motors and, and uh, you know, skids and stuff like that to have the absolute best, uh, right. I guess, chance, you know, against popping up, uh -huh. uh, you know, and a lot of the competitors don't have anything, you know, remotely close. So I was just wondering about that. So uh, you brought up the, uh, the Georgia insulation. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me bring that up for the people so that they can see uh, this particular uh, uh, job that you did, because it was absolutely amazing. Um, this is a uh, uh, look from the outside in uh, mm -hmm. to the building. And then as I go through, um, if you don't mind, uh, you know, if you, if you could just give us some comments, uh, like uh, this particular shot here, uh, you know, what, what, how does that speak to you there, Christopher? Uh, with the, the key thing with this building is obviously the windows and what I wanted to focus on is not just the experience people have with the work inside the space. It's important for people outside to also experience the work. So this, this window becomes a display for the artwork. Uh, so when you're across the street or even at this angle, you get an entirely different experience from outside as you would do inside. And I think something that's really cool about this particular building is the fact that uh, the way that the walls are, are staggered like that. Uh, there's just something about your your work and then the the different, you know, angled walls that just it's it just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely one of the details that it, it was a. Kind of, it was a difficult process to develop a piece of artwork that would flow across the four walls because they're all different whips. And basically, I had to come up with the overall pattern that you see, and then I had to adjust several panels in order to fit the building. So there's, it's completely site-specific in that regard. It wouldn't necessarily work anywhere else. Uh, I really like the way that you use the entire uh, surface of the, of the canvas as opposed to just leaving the edges right. as, a, as a, you know, a, just a canvas, you know, going all the way around was just... It's, it's it's really stunning. I appreciate that. Yeah, and to your point, the underside, another thing, as I mentioned earlier, about these diagonals is the retinal quality that they have. They, they provide great, we call it in the art world, eye wobble, or at least I refer to it as eye wobble. Um, and the key thing for me, with the height of this space too, I wanted people to have alternate experiences when they look up from when they're down in the space and they look up. It's a completely different experience of the, the colors and the diagonals. So I paid close attention to the color combinations, uh, the height of each panel, the lowest and the highest, uh, where the light would be hit in at particular parts of the day. So if you stayed there all day, you'd really get many different experiences of one singular piece of artwork. Well, and I think that the other really cool thing is that it's almost like every time you look at it, uh, it it's it's different every time. I mean, uh, I see something different and I've looked at these, you know, so many different times that uh, I just, I, I, I just love that. I mean, you, you definitely uh, took a, an idea that, uh, I mean, of the things that I've seen people do with our, our product, uh, this is, you know, by far one of the coolest. Oh, I really appreciate that. That is something that I, I aim to do, as I mentioned also, is that to, to reveal the potential of, a material that perhaps would uh, go unnoticed. And I think it's important to note that I really appreciate the function of this tape and any other ready-made. I used to work in warehouses. I've worked in these environments as a, a, a young teen into my early 20s. And I, these were always the types of materials that stood out to me. And I appreciate how they function in the space, how they assist in organization and safety. So I, the thing is, is that these materials are made for that reason. And because of that, they have specific formal qualities 
And I, lo I love taking those formal qualities and utilizing them and transforming them into a piece of artwork. And, and by the way, I didn't mean to, to uh, basically uh, regurgitate your words there about the, you know, what, what, what made you, uh, you know, do things a certain way. But uh, I did want to point out that I, you know, I feel, uh, you know, that the way that you look at it is just seen different every single time you look at it, you know, so um, that was really cool. Now you have pieces. I'm going to, I'm going to bring you up full screen, but you have pieces behind you, uh, that you said are also mighty line. Can you explain some of those in the back? I can't. Yeah. So this is, um, what's the best way to go this way. So these, these two here, they are, um, the four inch tape and they are basically cut up into tiny slivers, um, anywhere from a quarter of an inch up to an inch and a half. And they're basically, this is my way of abstracting the diagonal signs a little bit more. So chopping them up that we see on this piece is a blend of all of the tape colors. And then on this one, we just have the pink and yellow. Um, and I, I have a series of these. And I'm also currently working on some small scale pieces in the same style. Um, they're gonna be like 12 by 10 inches. Um, and they will be on my website within a week or two. How long does it take you to do, say, the uh, the 10 inch one that you said are going to be on your website and one like uh, that's behind you? Uh, so the pieces behind, I'd say when it's a singular color, it's a lot quicker because there's well, it's one color that I have to cut up and stick down with the pieces where it's multiple colors. It's going to take a little bit longer. I would say that the one with all of the tape colors can take anywhere from two weeks to three weeks, um, depending on my schedule of other pieces I'm making. But the small, the small scale pieces will probably be around maybe four to eight days, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. And how long did the uh, Georgia installation uh, take to, to complete? Uh, the piece for Georgia Tech, um, from the idea development, and me having to uh, present the, my proposal to the arts committee and the staff at Georgia Tech, um, I would say overall that was close to a year, but also the pandemic um, was a factor in that. But from the start of fabrication to install, it was three months. Wow. Yeah, that it, it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, um, what I want to do here, if you don't mind, uh, Christopher, is bring up a couple pieces that you did for our home office. Um, this is the first one. Uh, can you explain that one? Uh, yeah, this is another shuffled piece. Uh, this one, all of the pieces that are cut are the exact same size. So whereas the pieces behind me are multiple different sizes from a quarter of an inch up to two inches, uh, I believe these were half inch exactly. Uh, and there's a specific pattern to these where we have a, a, like a diagonal row of red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Um, so there is a pattern in there, but I like to deconstruct and abstract that pattern so it becomes kind of a, almost you, like you said earlier about the, the Georgia Tech piece, you can, you can look at it for a long time from different angles and you're gonna get a different experience each time you look at it. Is there any sort of a uh, patriotic uh, feel to this with the red, white, and blue, or was it just uh, colors the, that work for you? Uh, not intentionally, but I, I mean, I, I do like, I, it is titled Red, White, and Blue. Um, so maybe there is some underlying tones of that. And and again, it's my, my work is open-ended in that regard. People can really take from it what they take from it. That's, that's uh, entirely acceptable. So here's another one of the pieces that you did for us. Uh, what, what is it about this one that you like? Uh, so this series... Um, Alec requested that I use all of the tapes that they have to hand. Uh, and and a, lot of the, a lot of these pieces are also color experimentations for me. Like I like to create artwork where the green and the black go together. I've got pieces where there's just green. Uh, and in that, that series that I created for Mighty Line HQ, they all kind of have different points at which the diagonals overlap a little bit. So this one, the diagonal is kind of split up and it's kind of janky. Uh, whereas other ones, they are clean and there's a concise line. So it's, it's kind of disrupting the visual experience and um, allowing the tape to distort the panel it's on also. 
I think disruption is, uh, and what's this particular one entitled? Uh, I, I'm, I mean, the title of my pieces are usually pretty standard. I think this one is green and black diagonal hazard tape. Well, just so you know, disruption would be a great name for uh -huh. this because I can see exactly what you're saying. It's it's kind of like just when you think you found the your uh -huh. common ground, you know, you're you're off kilter again, you know. So exactly. Yeah, I really really like that piece. And then uh, this is another one. Uh huh. So this is the this is a small scale piece of the one behind me. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, and so this th this one here is the one I am. This kind of style is the one I'm working on for the 12 by 10 inch pieces. Uh, and I, I love this because one of the things I also focus on is creating pieces like the green and black one that's fairly straightforward. Uh, and then pieces like this, I could do hundreds of these and each one will have its own particular characteristics because I kind of go into this state of putting the colors together as they feel they need to go. There's, there's a, um, a certain state of mind I get into with these pieces that I, I really enjoy. Yeah, I could see this being, you know, something that uh, could go anywhere from someone being able to show the color palettes that are available to, you know, almost like a pride thing or, I mean, there's, there's a million and one things that I see when I look at this, you know, so it's, it's, it's just uh, so multifaceted that uh, um, just amazing. I mean, I don't mean to keep saying that, but uh, your pieces are, are absolutely incredible. So how about this one? This one is one of my favorite pieces. Um, and, and to what you said earlier, where just where you feel like you've got it, there's kind of a slight disruption. So on this one, I wanted the specifically the, the black and the yellow and the pink and the yellow to cut through um, the, the red, white, and blue here. So there's, you kind of have your eyes bounce around from the middle one to the right to the left in order to try and fit the whole piece together. Uh, and I especially like this one because it was dedicated to um, a, a close friend of the Mighty Line team. Yes. And um, that, that for me was a really, poignant moment for me as an artist, I think, when my artwork that utilizes this material by Mighty Line is dedicated to somebody that was so important for that company. Yeah, it's, and the way that it's showcased at the home office, uh, you know, with the lighting and just the, the presentation, and, and you'd have to imagine the, the, uh, the, the fact that it, because it's a church, it's mm -hmm. got some very interesting natural lighting uh -huh. as well. You know, so um, they kept it very open uh, in the way that they did it. Uh, so it is just, uh, you know, amazingly, uh, you know, displayed. But uh, uh, before I pop this off to where, you know, people can see us again, uh, I, I would almost call this like, uh, you know, uh, life with caution or something, because that that's the way that I feel is like it's it's exciting and and and, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, filled with life, but yet, you know, you got that yellow caution that, that kind of goes through the middle of it. Uh -huh. And it, it just, it's almost like it brings that, uh, you know, uh, be careful, you know, kind of a feeling to it. Like, you know, it's, it's okay to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, jump into life, but, you know, just, you know, kind of do so with, with caution. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really neat. Uh -huh. I, but that, again, that goes back to what I said with, um, I, I believe that signs of safety remind us we exist and there are, these moments where we go through life and there are hazards and there are moments at which we have to be reminded of these things. And this is one of the reasons that I enjoy using the material so much. Well, you know, one of the things that we try to do is, as you know, manufacturers is let people know that the ways to kind of go and, and use our products in a way that you may not have thought. So, I mean, it, it could be, you know, using tape on the floor in a certain way or a certain pattern or, you know, leading people around or, you know, the signs and, and tape can be customized as well. So uh -huh. because of that, you know, we are essentially kind of open doors no matter what. If we don't have it, we can probably create what your, what your you know, idea is. Uh -huh. But the way that you've done it is, you know, just, uh, you know, a, a completely and utterly, you know, different than anybody else. But I think that... Uh, the thing that, you know, what people would, would kind of glean from this is, you know, new ideas that, oh, hey, what if we did this? 
you know, uh -huh. kind of a thing. And yeah, you know, they may not have the wherewithal to you know have someone like you design it, but uh -huh. you know maybe they could come up with a way that uh, you know uh, kind of uh, um, allows them you know right. to, to you know kind of uh, pursue their uh, artistic you know uh, uh, thoughts of, of ways to to use this and, and alert people to safety that uh, hadn't been thought of before. Right, exactly. I, I'm I'm happy to inspire people, and um, yeah, I don't, I don't. I mean, if there are warehouses that would like a specific installation, also, I mean, that's one of the things I'm very interested in. The Georgia Tech piece is extremely interesting because it's a safety building, therefore the tape is able to function perfectly. But I I really am interested in going into spaces where like warehouses, and even if they're just temporary installations, just like kind of moments of a different experience of something that people experience all the time. Well, we'll certainly, uh, you know, spread the word about not only the artwork that you did, but, uh, you know, the out of the box, you know, uh, mentality that you had with, you know, with the, the tape and, and the, is there uh, anything that you have thought about after looking at the, the product line, uh, you know, in the form of, uh, uh, you know, non-diagonals or uh um i guess uh other products that we offer dots or arrows or anything like that that, that you have uh, plans for art with uh i i have done some pieces a few years back with the arrows okay uh, and the um the t's and the right angles the corners and the t's i think they're called um uh and i have some some of the glow tape uh, with the glow strip uh, I've I've been experimenting with those, but I've kind of yet to reach something that's as successful as these pieces that I work on. Um, but I mean, I'm always open to exploring materials, and Alec and I are in dialogue fairly consistently. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm hopeful for the future that I'll be utilizing more of the materials. That would be really cool if you could come up with something that uh, you know utilizes you know, the dots or, uh, you know, something that, you know, the footprints or uh, I'm sure, I'm sure there's something that, you know, that we have that, uh, you know, will, will, uh, inspire you, you know, for the future. So Christopher, uh, how can someone get in touch with you? Uh, how can, uh, someone, you know, commission your art? Uh, mm -hmm. can you just give us a, a little bit of, uh, insight as to the best way to contact you? Yeah, uh, so my website, um, I've recently updated my website. I have um, a shop section on there, and I also have a contact page where there's ex uh, people can reach out to me if there's a specific commission. Uh, on the shop page, there's several pieces that are ready and available, and there are also examples of pieces that I made for Mighty Line in which I could be commissioned for. Um, and my website is www.cpforpool.com. D for Delta, E, A, N for Nigel, art.com. So that's www.cpdeanart.com. And okay. also on my, on my Instagram as well, which is cpdean. Uh, those are the best ways for me, for people to look at my work and reach out to me if they're interested. Okay. And what I'll do is I will go through and make sure that uh, um, we have those uh, overlaying on this video and not only uh, that, but uh, we'll make sure that we include them in anything that we go through and, and, and uh, you know, post this out. Um, is there anything that you wanted to tell me about to wrap things up? Uh, no, I think, I think that's, I think I've covered everything. Um, I, I'm, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. I always enjoy talking about my artwork. Um, but what I enjoy most is talking with people that are perhaps not experienced a familiar material in the way that I utilize it. So for me, the dialogue is all a part of the expansive um, nature that I'm trying to reach with my artwork. So yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. Well, we appreciate it. You know what? I, I do a podcast called Warehouse Safety Tips, and mm -hmm. it is so refreshing to see, you know, just kind of an out of the box uh, way of looking at, at safety for a second, because I think that one of the things that happens and, and uh, you know, where your artwork especially fits is people become, um, it's kind of like if you work in a uh, uh, fertilizer plant, you know, people probably walk by and go, oh my God, how, how in the world do you work here? 
<laughs> you know, it smells so bad. And I promise you that they don't even smell it. You know, <laughs> I grew up living next to a train and people would just come unglued, you know, when they would be in my house and say, how in the world do you live here? And I'd be like, you know, I don't even hear them wow. anymore. Yeah. You know, so I think that safety happens the same way. You uh -huh. see the signs, you see the tape, you see the, you know, all the different, you know, warning signals essentially in front of you, but you become very blind to them. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, so if something, you know, kind of jumps out like your artwork, it's, right. it's refreshing. Oh, uh, that's, I really appreciate that comment. I think that's actually quite beautiful. Thank you. You're most welcome. Well, Christopher, I can't thank you enough for your time. I know that your time is extremely valuable. So thank you very much for letting us interview you. And uh, is there anything else that you want to wrap up with and tell the, the audience or, or that you have coming up? Uh, I have um, a group show that I'm a part of opening on September the 13th in North Carolina. Uh, and that is at the, um, the Bascom Center for the Visual Arts. Um, and it's a show called Play, and it's about how as um, children and artists, we are encouraged to play as a means to discover. Um, and I actually have a piece that utilizes the Mighty Line safety tape um, on nine cubes that are stacked on a shelf quite precariously. Um, so yeah, that opens on September the 13th at the Bascom Center for the Visual Arts in North Carolina. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, if you'll do me a favor offline, send me information on uh, the show. And if you have a picture of the artwork that's going to be displayed, we'll include that as well. Okay. Yeah, I do. I'll, I'll send that over. Fantastic. Well, Christopher, again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it immensely. And uh, just uh, have a great day. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Same to you. Awesome.